<clears throat> uh, hello, my name is David Hennigman. Uh, I'm a graduate student taking this uh, nature writing course. And for my video presentation, I'm going to discuss um, Hiro, Hiromichi Ugaya's book, Portrait of Fukushima 2011 to 2015, Life After Meltdown. And uh, this book deals with the triple disaster that happened on March 11th, 2011. So the, the earthquake followed by the tsunami and then the nuclear meltdown. Um, and of course, this is a huge issue to everybody in Japan, right? So I, I was here at that time. Uh, we were, <clears throat> my family and I were safe, right? We were in Yokohama, which didn't receive so much damage. But um, yeah, it was a very scary time. And you know, within the last four years, uh, it's really been on every, everyone's mind here. Um, for example, in a writing class I teach here, um, when I had the students write about fear, something they were afraid of, almost everybody wrote about the earthquake. So it's, it's very much in the consciousness here. Um, so I wanted, to explain, I wanted to explain why I think uh, Mr. Ugaya's work relates to nature writing. So, because I think, I th I, when I first, some of the readings we did earlier in the uh, semester, um, I felt were a bit different from what, you know, what I was leaning toward wanting to do my video project on, but I don't know. Um, as the semester goes on, I'm seeing what a, what a massive scope nature writing contains, and I wanted to explain how, <laughs> give me a second here. I wanted to explain how it relates to what I'm doing here. I took a few, uh, yeah, a few, I have a few definitions of nature writing that um, I would like to relate to what we're doing here. Um, okay, um, this is Paul, Paul T. Bryan said nature. Nature writing is a specific genre of non-fictive prose about nature written in a way that remains faithful to the objective scientific facts, it includes those facts as a significant element of content, and at the same time presents a human response and relationship to those facts. So uh, the work that I'm going to discuss is um, it's a work of yeah, photojournalism and prose, okay, or caption. Well, some prose, some caption writing. Um, but is I kind of view as a, a great example of this because you're looking at the, the facts. You know, he's showing you the stark images of the um, destruction and then um, comments on it. You see his human reaction to it and what's he, what he writes about each photo. And um, I think a lot of the words he uses are very um, poignant and... Uh, really, yeah, his, his, human, his human response really comes through, okay? So um, that's, that's something I wanted to show. Uh, let's see. Oh, also, this is a rather long quote by uh, Mark Mossman. But he, yeah, he talks about just someone's real self, the truthful nature writing. Okay, uh, nature writing to enact that process to discover some kind of self and also, importantly, some kind of real, truthful world, okay? So um, I think if you look at this work, you see how the man Ugaya develops as an artist and as, as an individual through this work, okay? So um, again, I feel it's, it connects to uh, nature writing that way. I wanted to read uh, from a personal email Ugaya sent me about, which is kind of a continuation of what Mossman said about finding your true self through nature writing and how this project affected Ugaya. Okay. Um, when I visited tsunami disaster zones in Iwate and Fukushima, I was literally stunned to see that all the houses, fields, cars, and humans have been wiped out for a vast range of areas. As far as I can see, 
there were only flattened fields and debris, no sign of life. It looked like an evil, gigantic monster had walked through. It could be described as deeds of devils, but when I looked down at the ground, I found a yellow line of blooming daffodils that had survived the tsunami. It was a touching view. The tsunami, which had cracked concrete wave barriers, failed to wash away these tiny little flowers, and the daffodils, the daffodils were still alive, being so, soaked in salty seawater and blooming a very vivid yellow. It taught me a great lesson. Nature is powerful beyond human's imagination. I mean, both tsunami and daffodils. Then daffodils were stronger than the tsunami. The beautiful plants have such a mystic power inside. After I returned to Tokyo, I became obsessed with shooting photos of flowers. And uh, Mr. Ugao sent me that email June 24th, 2015. So, um, yeah, I think it's a lot of what we'd study, we studied in this course, how someone being exposed to the beauty and wonderment of nature, how it could change that person and <clears throat> give that person guidance in other areas of their lives. Um, so, um, okay, I'm going to show you, I did a um, fairly long interview with Mr. Ugaya, but I'm, I just chose 10 minutes of this interview that I'm going to share with you now. And in this interview, he talks about um, really the effect of the, the, radio, the radiation in the area that had to be evacuated, the effect of that on people's lives, um, you know, in kind of a social, in a social context, what it meant for families to suddenly have to evacuate your homes. And there um, is still, oh, I was going to read the intro to this book just to give you some, a bit of facts. I'm sure all of you know about the, um, this disaster, but mm, I wanted to give you... Mm -hmm. I wanted to give you a, a bit of context because it's been it's been four years, so I want you to <laughs> I want it to be fresh. You know, I want the information to be fresh in your mind. Let's see. Um, before we watch uh, Mr. Bugaya's comments, give me just a second. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see, I have the... Hmm, okay. This is, from, this is from the introduction to the book we're discussing, okay? I have been covering Fukushima's nuclear disaster since day one. I have traveled to Fukushima from Tokyo almost 50 times in the last four years and shot more than 50,000 photographs. The first is, this book is my first English publication however, and was conceived with a global audience in mind. In Fukushima, Japan, the battle against radiation is still continuing. Even now, four years after the March 11, 2011 triple disaster, the quake, tsunami, and nuclear power plant meltdown, 122,000 Fukushima residents are still displaced from their homes due to radioactive contamination. 1,822 Fukushima evacuees have died from illness or suicide without making their way back home. As of December 2014, the number of evacuee deaths exceeds the number of deaths of Fukushima residents that were directly caused by the earthquake and tsunami, which was 1,603. The half circle of 40 kilometers, 25 miles, in diameter around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant still remains basically uninhabited. Yeah, and this is the area that he, he visited. And I, I will give you a link... I will include a link in the description or somewhere you can easily recognize that um, includes uh, some of his photos and some of the text from this work. Um, so please enjoy uh, this interview with the author, Hiromichi Ugaya, and yeah, he will talk about the effect of the people in this evacu evacuee area. Okay? Thank you. Um, could you just maybe tell me a few stories of people you met in Fukushima? All right. Okay. Uh, in Fukushima, I interviewed so many uh, 
families mostly, because uh, what I uh, paid attention in coverage of Fukushima's people is that uh, how uh, nuclear power accidents will influence the family or I mean, just ordinary people's ordinary lives, how it will influence the uh, their family lives or their business lives. And I realized that uh, the first thing uh, which happened to Fukushima family was that they tried to e evacuate their children. It's very natural because uh, children and uh, women, especially pregnant women, and uh, babies are, are most most sensible uh, people uh, to the radiation. So they tried to evacuate the children uh, to uh, like a next prefectures, like Yamagata or Niigata. Then the problem happened because uh, first uh, fathers uh, tried to evacuate with their families. Uh, where, you know, in those places where the evacuees reached, uh, let's say in Yamagata or Niigata, they couldn't find a job because the uh, uh, recession is still really bad in Japan and also job opportunity is pretty limited in those uh, non-urban areas like Niigata or Yamagata. And uh, no, um, up, well, let's say like uh, outside the big city like Tokyo or Osaka, a job opportunity is really bad. Job market is almost dead. So the fathers of those evacuated families have to go back to their hometown to go back to their former job, although the hometown is contaminated. So uh, it's just like a Tanshin Funi. Uh, in Japanese, we say Tanjin uh, when the father uh, get transferred to some remote places uh, for the company's direct personal order, and the uh, children uh, stay in their home uh, to keep on studying for this uh, future academic career to get into better university. That is called Tanjin Funi, like a uh, uh, father goes along, moves along. It's just opposite. Father stayed home, and the uh, rest of the family members evacuated somewhere remote. So uh, I interviewed one guy, uh, one father, who is a truck driver, and uh, uh, he stayed their hometown, and their apartment house is heavily contaminated. Like when I uh, put out the uh, dose meter of my own to the apartment, it was like more than one micro sieve per hour, which is pretty risky, and uh, my uh, dose meter became. Uh, red color, which means a, a warning of danger. But anyway, uh, the father, uh, who was uh, who is you know, 43 years old, a uh, guy named the, uh, uh, Watanabe-san, Watanabe-san evacuated their family, uh, two uh, teenage boys and uh, his wife, uh, the mother, uh, to Yamagata Prefecture in a rural uh, mountain bridge, which is clean from radiation. And he was driving the uh, truck all day in the work days from Monday to Friday. And then on Friday night, he goes, drives all the way for two hours or three hours to see their family, see his family to Yamagata. And they uh, spend the weekends with them. And then Monday morning, he drives back to uh, uh, Fukushima all, all the way, uh, driving for three hours again. But after having uh, spent that lifestyle for uh, one or two years, uh, he vomited blood oh. because of fatigue wow. and the mental stress. And although he was, um, I don't think his uh, vomiting blood was not like an influence of radiation, but he was highly stressed. He was so concerned about his family and he was so concerned about uh, his own health, and he was not feeling okay, and he was always tired, and uh, he was away from uh, family care, like uh, he was living alone, so, um, you know, um, nobody to take care of him, nobody cooked him a dinner, mm. so he's, he was in a very bad uh, nutrition condition, <laughs> so one day, he literally uh, vomited blood, like, and he fainted in a parking lot. Wow. He was carried away by ambulance. Wow. And uh, he, uh, the scary part is that he was, he's not the only one who got sick by the stress. 
And、uh, I interviewed some other people who, turned, who got sick because of the、um, uh, mental stress. Well, of course, physical stress is so bad. And、um, they had all the same kind of uh, ment- uh, physical and mental problem, like uh, uh, heavy stress, depression,、uh, insomnia,、uh, what else?、Uh, too much drinking, like heavy alcohol dependency. And some people go through like a gambling dependency in pachinko. And, the some,、uh, and the also,、um, how about the physical condition? Uh, headache, uh, vomiting,、uh, what is that? They cannot eat. Okay, yeah,、uh, loss of appetite. Loss of appetite.、Mm. So many symptoms. Anyway, they are far away from、uh, normality.、Oh. And、uh, that kind of、uh, mental or physical problems happens even before、uh, the. Influence of radiation started. So they are already sick. You know what I mean? And also, another mental problem happens between the family, within the family. Yes, let's say, I'm giving an example.、Uh, there was one、uh, housewife in the 40s, and、uh, the, her children were in elementary school,、uh, like a 10 years old girl and a 12 years old boy,、uh, those who are in age, which are most. Sensitive to radiation exposure. So the mother,、uh, she wanted to evacuate the、uh, children to some、uh, remote place. But husband, the father, did not say yes because the father's parents stayed in the hometown, which was contaminated. And uh, the uh, two generations, no, three generations、uh, lived in the same house together. And the、uh, grandparents loved grandchildren so much, so they didn't want to keep and、uh, go, you know, make them go away to remote places. So,、uh, grandparents did not like their grandchildren go away. But mom, mother was、uh, so scared, so concerned that they want to go and make children go away. So, the husband, the father was in between their own parents and、uh, their wife. Mm. And one day, the father decided no more discussion about evacuation. If you talk about evacuation of children, one word, I'm going to divorce you. Wow. So the mother got depression, serious depression. And、uh, that kind of、uh, gap or chasm within the family is very serious. And not only within the family, Uh, like a confrontation, a standoff, an, or argument within a community is so bad. Like, a, like a, within a small mountain bridge with a population of 5,000, which means very small town, people、uh, got divided by the attitude toward the radiation influence. Some people wanted to evacuate and they did not want to go back anymore. But some people, Say that we should stay in our hometown, we should protect our hometown. And、uh, if you leave our hometown, we, we, we think、uh, you, you are the traitors, Some, that kind of mentality. And、uh, the confrontation between two groups is not,、uh, you know, what should I say, reconciliation? Is, not,、oh. is beyond reconciliation、yeah. anymore. And some、uh, that kind of、um, standoff becomes a political issue.、Uh, in a, let's say, like in a time of the、uh, British mayor's election, the st-、uh, standoff becomes so harsh, argument becomes so harsh, so they became like enemies with one whole small community. So, the,、uh, before、uh, the influence of radiation starts,、uh, Their communi- community is already destroyed by nuclear power plant accidents. So,、uh, whenever I say, I'm asked that, you know, how is the influence of nuclear power accident in Fukushima, I always say damage is already done, even before radiation damage starts. Am I, am I making sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay.